This is a comment from Serban Orlaru on Facebook. Great switch. You quoted Paisios, St. Paisios Veloskovsky, who was a Russian ethnic, by the way, that baptism is the only way into the church. Correct. Baptism, you may add. And then you spend the rest of this talk pretending that Eugene Rose was Orthodox and a priest, despite not having been baptized Orthodox. Yeah, that's that's quite an undiscerning comment from Serban Orlau. Let's unpack it and why Serban is wrong. The next comment what? is related. Oh, is it related? Okay. The truth is Eugene Rose would not be received to be communed in the Holy Mountain today, nor by Elder Ephraim when alive, because he lacked holy baptism. So I have a lot of experience on the Holy Mountain and a lot of experience among the monasteries of Elder Ephraim. And I actually live down the street from Elder Ephraim's monastery. And I know for a fact they don't deny people communion at this monastery if they're not baptized. So that's just wrong. And I spent many years going to Mount Athos, all over Mount Athos, I, and I do not remember that being a universal practice. It is practiced in some monasteries, but not at all universally. So again, undiscerning and not knowledgeable. I'm, sur I'm sorry to hear Serban talking in such a def definitive way about something which he doesn't have a definitive knowledge about. Um, do we want to put that? Let me put this uh, put this on the screen. You want to start while I'm doing that, or you want me to do it? It's up to you. Well, I mean, I don't have a whole lot to add, but I think if you, I think if you look at the totality of his life, which does include his life after repose, um, we're we're not talking about just a layman. We're not talking about someone who. Um, it seems like you're saying he's not a, he's not even a holy man right um yeah i just it's, it's hard to know where to start with that but there's just countless miracles after his repose a number of them have been recorded uh, i've even talked with some of the people who have those miracles recorded um and you know the the we we should drive home which i'll just say one more thing um Baptism is essential, and yet at the same time, God's grace can overcome someone not being received by baptism. And I think we see that very evidently with Father Sarah from Rose. While we, while he shouldn't be an example of, he shouldn't become a precedent to say, oh, you don't need to be received by baptism. Uh, at the same time, it's very undiscerning and uh, to to just reject him because of that, like. You're rejecting all the grace of God that was shown through him in his life here on earth and his life after his repose. Um, I can't get the whole quote on the, the, this doesn't give me an ability to have the whole quote, so I can only do so much, but um, let's put the quote there and then we can answer it. So I've actually, I've actually addressed this uh, a number of occasions in our question and answer, and I've addressed this in a video. So if you want to Hear my answer to this in a video. I have a video all about this, and I explain how I how I think we can understand this in a patristic way. And here, here's my attempt to restate that, which I don't think will be as good. So go watch the video. You can find it on Orthodox Ethos. But what we should understand properly is that in spite of the error, in spite of the practice, which was an error, and I think that, that our book makes a very good case of why that was an error, why it was a departure from patristic tradition, going back hundreds of years, by the way, Serban, if I'm saying your name right, forgive me. Hundreds of years from 1666, the Russian church has this practice. So if you're going to have this legalistic mentality, that you're going to write off Eugene Rose, Father Sarah from Rose, for his reception, which he did not choose, you're going to write off hundreds of years of the Russian church. This is truly a totally undiscerning understanding of, of God's providence and his economy in spite of the error. So you can call out the error, and it's obvious it is not the same teaching that we have in the ecumenical councils and the consensus of the fathers. It's not following the criteria. The 1666 council, which is the, the beginning of all this in the Russian church, it's if you read the chapter in our book, all the histories there, we're quoting mainstream historians and theologians. This is not our idea. This is the established fact of what happened there. It was a departure from patristic tradition for reasons which are totally unjustified and, and innovated with regard to the reception and if, and and it's it, it was an error i don't think it's debatable once you understand who was running that council what their motivations were and how they just totally departed for 500 years of very consistent tradition 
in the Russian church, which had been doubled down and defended just 40 years earlier. However, having stated that, and we're producing the book, which is showing that this is the case, we're standing on this and confessing it at the same time, then to write off the next 300 years because they received many, many people, including those who've been glorified as saints like St. Elizabeth and Father Seraphim Rose, who's been glorified in the Georgian church as a saint by one bishop at least, and is considered a saint by millions of Orthodox Christians. To write that off is the height of, of lack of discernment. And I'll tell you why. Because God works in spite of our errors. Thank God. Thank God he works in spite of our errors. We'd be lost. And and Father Seraphim's zeal and love and, and, and obedience and humility is not going to just be brushed aside and thrown into the garbage because he was received improperly. Having said that, knowing that this was improper in our error, we should not continue the error. This is not a call for continuing the error and justifying. And this is where people get it wrong. They say, Father Seraphim was received by this, so therefore it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. And Father Seraphim never chrismated anyone. So he understood very well that it mattered. The Church of Broad understood that it mattered, and it does matter. And we, and if you consciously commit the error, then God, why would God support you? If you consciously and knowingly, after hearing the Patricia's tradition and all the rest, say, oh, it doesn't matter, let's double down on the error, well, then I don't know how you can expect God's grace and compassion and his picking up which was that which was done in ignorance, largely in ignorance by many. We talk about this in one of the chapters in the book. We say about how holy men can receive from their elders errors if they have never prayed and 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 poured over and asked god for illumination on things this happens it's it's a teaching by saint barsanufius read the book and you'll see that this is not unknown and there is an understanding among the fathers how we can explain these things your perception forgive me brother is extremely legalistic it's extremely legalistic and it is not nuanced and it's not patristic Father Seraphim is going to be celebrated and is celebrated now and forever as a struggler is obvious from his life. So you have to find another explanation. Then he would not be, how did you put it? Pretending that he was an Orthodox and a priest. This is the height of legalism. And I'm sorry that you, you have not gotten from this, this talk tonight that it's much deeper than this. This is the kind of thing that Father Seraphim was probably afraid of for his converts. <laughs> He's probably saying... I hope my converts don't get this mentality from the super correct over on the right. Forgive me for the very spirited response, but it really it needs to be very clearly rebu rebuked and clearly stated how we should understand both the one and the other. Anything to add? Go ahead, Timothy. Nope, I can't add anything better. I'm still